Hello and welcome to my Yu-Gi-Oh channel. Today we're looking at some of the news to do with the Digital Next, more specifically with Yu-Gi-Oh Rush Duel's Psycho Royale. Now, the creators mentioned his intentions were for, for the official release to be in Japan in August 2021, with the official release in Europe and, and America to happen during fall. The reason for this is they explain it's to do with an increasing popularity of Rush Duel's they've seen over the last year. My opinion is that's a natural progression. Considering that this is the new series, Yu Go 7s, it's the new anime, and this is where most of the cards are going to be concentrated on. And even some of the newer packs, I'm guessing they're going to push more towards the Rush Doors than they are with the traditional format of Yu Go. That's a normal approach. My other thing is there is an intention by the creator to enable new players to learn rules which are much simpler than the traditional game. And that means they're going to be more enticed to play this, not going to feel so overwhelmed by it, learn this game and then hopefully go into speed duels and then transition into the traditional game at some point. So they're trying to get everyone at one point or another. It's also meant to rekindle the desire of older players who may have lost interest in the traditional game. There could be many reasons behind this. It might be they might be of an age where they think I've got other commitments to do. I don't have the time to play Yu-Gi-Oh! as I did as a child. There might be monetary issues. For example, some of the rare cards, some of the competitive cards are incredibly expensive, which means you have no access to them unless you heavily invest, in which case most people will either quit there or they'll play only a few games, or they'll try and run things that are rogue because they know they won't have the ability to compete at a competitive level because everyone else is running those cards. So it's an attempt to try and bring those people back. Most of those people now, I would say, are in their late 20s slash early 30s. You might have some people who are a bit older than that as well. I would call these people more closet duelists because... They'll keep it hidden that they've got an interest in Yu-Gi-Oh! But they'll still play at some level, whether that's online, maybe with some close friends. Somewhere where they don't feel that they're going to get mocked or teased. I mean, everyone has their own different passions, and so this is just how they are. They probably experienced it quite badly before, and have kind of kept things hidden. I would say the most interesting part is the release is timed similar between most of the countries. And the reason for this is, considering that fall tends to be anywhere between August and, I would argue, maybe October. I think August to October is about fall, that's the classification. It's trying to time the release similar between them and in America and in Japan, so that users have a greater overall experience. For example, when a new game is released, more players tend to play that game at the beginning of the release than at most times after a progressive time throughout the release. So, for example, you will see a drop of new users or existing users probably a year or so after the game has been released. I would liken this a bit to how Pokemon released, uh, I think it was black and white. They released that worldwide at the same time. The whole idea is that everyone gets to play at the same time and everyone gets to experience that at the same time. With some of the older games for Pokemon, it happened to be that Japan got these first, and they'd get those a couple of months beforehand. So by the time the Americans, the British, the Europeans, the Australians had access to these games, already Japan had the competitive builds of their Pokemon, versus all these new players that are having to grind through the game as quickly as they can to try and get these competitive Pokemon to be able to play in world tournaments. I know there was, like exceptions made where they would actually extend tournaments and make sure that when the world tournaments were available they were extended to a point where you know you would easily have a team but it made it more fun when everyone had that immersive experience together i think that's the whole idea for this and actually it's a really good one and i'm, I'm glad they're actually looking towards this design they also mentioned that players can play either with friends casually or within a competitive setting, more likely across the world online. Again, this is depending on what you want to do as the duelist. Do you want to be going into the competitive side of it? Do you want to be playing online for maybe tournament prizes? Maybe, who knows, this might have some access to having a new version of it, such as Legacy of the Duelist, 
as a competitive format where you can actually win play mats and go into official tournaments and actually meet people. Who knows when that will happen, but that potentially could happen as part of this game, especially since it's the first Rush Duels game we're going to receive. You're going to eventually have a world's Rush Duels equivalent. So that's one idea. The other aspect is if you are a child and your parents aren't letting you do this type of thing, you always have the option of at least playing with your friends. So even if you don't have a lot of people that you can actually duel against, maybe you've got a few close people who will actually follow your interests. Overall, I like the design of the game. It is a bit simplistic. I do liken it a bit to like Tag Force 4 and 5. It's around those type of ideas. Obviously, the cards aren't going to be as progressive as some of the traditional format cards. And I think that's fine. It's simply designed to get older and new players into the game and introduce them to a new way of dueling. And also, it mentioned there, the creator mentioned that certain cards will let you completely change the dynamic of the game. At one point, your opponent might be winning, and then suddenly you might draw into a certain number of cards, be able to normal summon multiple times within your turn, and then be able to reverse the outcome of the duel. It's exciting to see the change of pace, even though you are progressively normal summoning constantly, and there are going to have to be limitations at some point. But for the time being, everything looks to be okay. I would only say that the downside I've got concerns of is I think if they were truly that effective and committed to try and get everyone to have that immersive experience, they would try and get the whole release for Japan, Europe and America at the same time. I realise that COVID is a thing and the situation with that means that shipping is not as easy as it was for when Pokemon Black and White was released a number of years ago where you could actually organise things to be the case. And that will probably not be the case for another few years, maybe at least another year or so, until we get a handle on the virus. But it's definitely nice to see that Konami has put some effort into making this an ex joint experience. And I'm hoping they will be looking towards doing this some more in the future. What do you guys think of the cards that have been introduced within Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Jewels? Are you excited to see this brand new game? And are you prepared to get it? Like I said, this is my initial reaction to it. I will be probably commenting and making new videos alongside this, as well as to do with Master Jewels and some of the other news that was introduced with the new Yu-Gi-Oh! Digital Next. So whatever you think, leave those comments down below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe for more daily Yu-Gi-Oh! content.